Hello, Alan. How you doing? Do you care? No, I don't. She can go out, screw uh, you know the entire football team, and she can screw your best friend, and you catch her, and then she can say, "I'm taking you for everything you've got," and then do it. Yeah, I know that kind of that kind of sucks, man. <laughs> so where do I find these guys that don't just want to hook up? Church basements. Church basements. Yes, yes, church socials. Mormon missions. Oh, God. And if you really want to meet men who don't want to meet women, yeah, maybe you go to the Catholic Church, meet a Catholic priest. I'm one of those nice guys, man. I need some help. I'm one of those guys who buys flowers and opens doors and pays for meals. There's got to be a point where you're mean, where you're the jerk. Like, you can't be too much of it. Where, how do you know? Well, let that? me ask you this. How's that working for you? Oh, I'm calling, right? That's my point. And by the way, just sing and shut up about your goddamn politics, okay? Please. Stop it. I, I, I really don't care what your politics are, especially if you're from another country. Just shut up and sing. But I doubt if white people would be wanting to claim Barack Obama if he was just some dude that uh, was half white that got in trouble. Oh, you're probably right about that. Uh, you know, certainly uh, over the years, if you're a criminal, you're black. And if you are the president right. of the United States, you're white. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, I tell you what, I tell you any white people try to claim Charles Barkley, even though his wife is yeah. white. I'll tell you that. <laughs> he was black as night. <laughs> and, and if he'd stop staying out at night, he'd be in less trouble. Yeah, he would. <laughs> Well, I know why people are excited, because we've had eight years of that buffoon. I can see everyone saying how Bush is screwed up, you know, this and that. But honestly, the guy didn't do that bad of a job. I mean, can anybody what? tell me how, what? how many... How many what? What? Okay, okay. What? Let, let me... Come on! From... Hollywood. Oh my God! It's the Tom Likas Show. I know him. I know him. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones on this Friday at one 800 tom Anything goes at one 800 8 Six six Kyle on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Dad. How's it going? Going great, son. All right. Hey, I just wanted to talk about the whole internet dating thing. Yeah. I finally dumped that bitch after four years. My buddy told yeah. me about it. I heard about it on the show. Finally got myself on there. I'm uh, banging. I would say two out of every ten girls and have the best time of my life. Very nice. Yes, we endorsed uh, online dating when we found out that thirty percent of all women. On online dating sites, put out of the first day, 30%. So, yeah, I'm not at the 30%. I'm at the 20% right now, but I'm building up the hot tub club yeah. and having a great time. Perfect. I mean, definitely, guys should not be uh, concerned when they uh, they put up these profiles uh, saying they're looking for a soulmate. Or they like puppies and sunsets and pictures of their cat on there. Don't be, don't be deterred because these women are just looking for plausible deniability when oh, they yeah. have sex with you. Absolutely, and it's just amazing that it's happening on the first date, and it's great. It's going to be the first Valentine's. I'm finally not taking the girl out. I'm going to go work at the bar, get drunk for free, and uh, probably take home the loneliest, hottest girl I can find. That's the way to do it. Oh, all right, Tom. Well, I just wanted to call and say hi. Love the show. Thanks for everything. Kyle, I am proud of you. Thank you for the call. Ellen on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Uh, Tom, I'm not a usual listener. My boyfriend listens to you occasionally. I'm a retired school teacher. She's on. I have a question. Yeah. When you took that person out a few guests ago and you said uh, JFK style and there were sh uh, shotgun sounds heard. Uh, the person asked me to take it out JFK style and I said senior or junior. Okay. Well, either one. Oh, senior or junior? Yeah. Senior. Senior, right? Well, he picked senior, yes. Okay, are those, is that him getting killed? 
Uh, well, that's a sound effect that would uh, be an indicator of that, yes. Okay, well, I'm I'm highly offended by that, and I well, I it's know okay you... because you're not in our target demographic, so uh, we're not worried about offending people who are not target listeners of the show. How old are you? I am probably older than you. That's How my old point. Are you? <laughs> I'm I'm 52 years old. Okay, well, I remember what I was doing when Kennedy was assassinated, and I don't know what kind of message that sends. Well, I. I most of our listeners were dripping down their mother's leg that day, okay? And that's the bottom line. We, uh, you're not in the target. Okay, I know I'm not in the target, but I just, I feel there are other ways. If you are, well, there may be, and you should tune into, you know, KABC or KRLA or stations where they do what you think is appropriate, because those stations are aimed at people your age. Well, yeah. I mean, I find you fascinating. I laugh. I think it's hysterical, but, I mean... I just feel that it's offensive to me. And it may be offensive to you, and I understand that, uh, okay. but it's clearly not offensive to the listeners who are in the target audience. I guess it's because they were younger and they probably weren't alive during that time, but I, I remember everything that I was doing. Well, and, and that's why, that, again, that's why people your age listen to KABC. Okay. Because well, they won't find offensive material like that on KABC. Uh, they will find, uh, for the most part, you know, very, yeah. uh, very polite discussions of. Uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not you politics. Know. Okay. And, uh, yeah. All right. So the thing is, we do a show that uh, is controversial and edgy. Yeah, I know. And, and our audience is generally men between the ages of eighteen and forty-four. That's our okay. audience. Okay. Well, I just, I just thought I'd voice my opinion. I well, was I shocked. Understand, I, I understand that, but again. Um, right. it, it, because I am in the marketing business, my job right. is to please the people in my target audience. Okay. And if I offend people outside of the target, I don't worry about that. Oh. Okay. By the way, by the way, you'll note I'm not even in my own target demographic because uh, that's true. You're not. But uh, <laughs> so uh, my job is to give the people what they want. Okay. Well, I respect that part. I just it just was a little bit shocking to me. If you're offended, I'm probably doing it right. Okay, but also I need to tell you that my boyfriend is 61, and for some reason he loves your show. He just gets the biggest kick out of it. Really? Because so. so maybe, maybe his sense of humor is more like the uh, audience. I, we, love, we I have a, a really funny sense of humor. It's just that I didn't really find that, you know. You never even heard good. JFK Jr. stuff. No, I haven't. Here it I've, is. I've only heard... Anyway. See how offensive well, that is? you listening to me. What, did you hear what? that? What was that? That was JFK Jr. style. Oh, God. With the airplane? Yes. And then the big splash at the end. Oh, gosh. Okay, well, I guess to each his own. But is the JFK one popular? Well, clearly people... Have not, by the way, now that you've brought it up, more people are going to ask for it. I know. <laughs> so crazy. inadvertently, by complaining about it, by registering <laughs> your concern... You have now uh, reminded people that it's out there, and now they will start requesting it. <laughs> okay, well, well. anyway, my, my boyfriend tells all the younger people that he knows to listen to you. But we live. I live in San Diego, but I still get your reception for some reason. I don't oh, know. that's good. Yeah. So, anyway, okay, well, thank you for talking to me about this. Anytime, Ellen. I'm here to uh help. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Jim on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Oh, that was great, Dad. <laughs> Thank you, son. <laughs> uh, this is Mrs. Snagbush, and my boyfriend was here too. But my caddy cat was in your garden. I have to turn on the radio. Uh, and my, can you get my pussy out of your garden? <laughs> oh, that was hysterical, Dad. Hey, listen, that's not why I called for, but. Uh, Great show. Um, <laughs> I know you like investing. I know you're into stocks and whatnot. And this yeah. is the first, I heard you earlier in the week talking about Bernie Madoff. Yeah. And I guess my first question is, had you invested, let's say, a good portion of your life savings? So you know Madoff is his middle name, not his last name. You know that, right? I wasn't aware of that. Yes, last name is with $50 billion. There you go. <laughs> Madoff with $50 billion. But my question is, seriously, if he would have taken you down, for instance, I guess, how would you have felt, number one? Number two, why do you think the feds are, are letting him out 
on his own, uh, you know, on his own. Um, well, his on own his own recognizance. Well, yeah. well, first of all, he's got a very large bail that was set, uh, which he will lose if he doesn't show up. And they don't I, consider him a flight risk. Uh, also, uh, well, you asked me two different questions, so I'm answering your second question first. Speculation has been that he is cooperating with investigators. And part of that cooperation means he would have to be home to be able to go through papers and look at the computer and look stuff up and what have you. So he's worth more to them being able to access that information than sitting in a jail cell. Sure. Okay, that's that's what I've heard. But don't you think, I mean, I would think a good percentage of the people that probably invested with him were probably honest, decent people. But don't you think there were some unscrupulous investors that might want to get even with him some way? Well, they might. So I, I guess he could request that the judge put him in jail. Yeah. I was just curious. I mean, I wouldn't want to be his neighbor. Uh, yeah. I mean, can you imagine what it's like living in that building right now? No. No, I couldn't imagine. All the media there? All the uh, cops there? No. Yikes. I'm just, yeah. Anyway, Tom, take me out. Wait, Eddie, we didn't get to the first question you had. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. And why, how would I feel if I were one? Well, first of all, I would not be one of his victims. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Because I don't invest money unless I know how it's being invested. The people who got screwed by Bernie Madoff are the people who said, here, just take my money. Don't, I don't even want to know what you're doing. How you get that return? Don't even tell me. Just send me the checks. Right. And uh, that's why all these people got screwed. Because they didn't know how the money was being invested. Do you know how many times... But salespeople and brokers have tried to sell me on stocks or hedge funds or mutual funds. And I said, wait a minute, how do they how do they get that kind of return? What are they doing? Yeah. And if I didn't get an answer, they didn't get the money. And that was it. Well, most of these guys are under 25 and have never made any money. Most of the victims? No, I'm talking about most of these brokers that are calling you up trying to get you to invest. Uh, some are, some are not. But the bottom line is, anybody who can't tell me specifically how the returns uh, uh, are, uh, how they come by the returns, I have no interest. Right. Now, the result is that my portfolio is down uh, overall an average of about 25%, which is bad, but not as bad as the market overall, which is down about 40 to 45%. Yeah, you're sitting pretty good. Yeah, I, and uh, but again, I, I, I had, and I have told you all along, that I have had very conservative investments. Now, what are your feelings on oil going for, going forward through this recession? There's no place to go but up for oil. Okay. And so, uh, you know, uh, this is a good time to get uh, energy companies on the cheap, and I wouldn't recommend doing it as individual companies because I don't think the average listener has expertise in that area. Right. Um, uh, I invest uh, in an energy mutual fund that is highly rated and uh, uh, very, very competent in this area. Right. Well, thank you, Father. You're doing a service to all the men out there in America. Son, as you know, I do it as a public service. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Ah, yes, the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> Here we are. Short of commercial breaks, less commercials, more telephone calls. We take them blazing fast now. Yes, if you've been trying to get through all these years, now's your time at one 800 800 tom Keith on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Keith. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. First time caller, first time listener. Cool. Just moved here. Oh, hey, man, I got a uh, situation I was hoping to get a little help on. I divorced ex-wife five years ago. Last year, I received a phone call from a department store claiming my credit card was overdue. So, scratching my head, I uh, remember back when making sure that all the credit cards were, our, our names were just associated with each other. So, anyway, talking to this department store, it turns out that my name was still attached to my ex-wife's credit card whose name had been changed to her maiden name. So uh, I'm a little bit uh, upset about this. Well, uh, did you talk to your divorce attorney? Uh, we didn't have an attorney. Why not? Because it was one of those simple, quick divorces. This, these are the kinds of things that happen. 
when you have simple, quick divorces. Now, what you need to do is you need to go to an attorney, and you need to take that matter up with an attorney. The, the bill is for about 900 bucks. It is my belief that this is not your responsibility. I would agree 100%. But who, you, know, you did this divorce yourself. Who knows if you actually have a divorce? I mean, honestly, you better talk to an attorney about it. Okay. Because, by the way, it's 900 that you know of. You don't know how many other cards she has, how many loans she's taken. You don't know how she's borrowed money. You don't know what she's doing. She might be leasing a car. Well, what I did is, first thing I found, about it, found out about this, I, made sh I contacted all the credit card companies I knew I had at the time, made sure my name was completely removed. Second of all, I... Do you I have any evidence of that? Excuse me? Did you get letters to confirm that? Yes. So then how in the world can they justify calling you and asking for payment? Why don't you start by telling the department store, hey, I've got a letter from your store. Says I'm not responsible. I've written letters to their management with no response. Well, that's when you need an attorney. Yeah. But I would call them, too. Yeah, I called them, and the people at the call center say, you no, know, no, 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 you do. don't call, no, you don't call the call center in Mumbai or wherever it is. You, you find the corporate headquarters of the store, and you call there. What store is it? Am I allowed to say it on the air? Yeah, well, I mean, we're not saying anything bad about them. Uh, what, what's the store? It's Dillard's. Dillard's. Where's the corporate headquarters of Dillard's? I think it's in Little Rock. I'm not sure, though. You don't even know. I'm gonna, I mean, come on, don't you know how to do any homework? You ever heard of Google? A point taken. All right, Dillard's Corporate Office. I just typed it in. And here we go. Dillard's Corporate Office, frequently asked questions. Yeah, I'm not going to do this on the air because uh, there's going to be too many uh, uh, dead spaces. But it appears they may be in some place like Orlando, Florida. If I were you, I would do the work, find out where their corporate headquarters are, and then uh, d d call there. All right, Tom. Thanks you see what I'm help. saying? You call there. You tell them you want to talk to the president. <laughs> you're, you're laughing. This yeah, is no, how you I get mean, the way you get I'm action. You find out the name of the president. You call the president. You will get a secretary, and the secretary will bump you down to somebody else. But now they know you're serious because you asked for the president. Do you think I should make any contact with, try to make contact with the ex? No, I would not do that. Okay. Now, Very right, good. Here you go. You know what? You were right in the first place. Little Rock, Arkansas. All right, that's my one. And their day. phone number right. is their phone number is 501 376 5200. That took me less than 2 minutes to find. Point taken. Tom, thanks for your help. Can you uh, take me out JFK Junior style for the yes, for the lady who yes. called earlier? Yes, I can. <laughs> for that guy, I'm sure it's just a clerical error. And, uh, you know, he's just got to call them and tell them he's got uh, a letter from uh, the store saying that he's no longer responsible for the card. Send a copy of the letter and you'll be done. And I'm sure they'll take care of it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Ralph on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Ralph. How are you doing today? Doing great. Great. Um, the football stadium, it's almost in the right spot. It should actually be off the 210. Uh, for what reason? Um, actually, there's a train going out that way, which can be linked up with, uh, with from downtown L.A. Um, if anywhere in that area, it's the maximum, a two-hour drive. you got L.A. County, Orange County, Riverside. Well, Kern, keep in mind, keep in mind that uh, these uh, stadiums are built where the developers own the land. There's no guarantee that Ed Roski owns land in the place that you think is perfect. Yeah, Roski bought property, and uh, he already bought the property and had the plans. Unfortunately, uh, it would actually be better. The, the 60 is tied up as it is, and it would actually be better on the 210. You don't think, wait, 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 wait. You don't think the 210 is tied up? 
Yeah, it is. But on a Sunday afternoon, um, it would you got more freeways leading to one spot. And how about when Santa Anita is running? That would be difficult, but they always make schedules. And trains are a lot easier. You could also uh, put uh, parking areas in uh, far away and then... Yeah, but he, he doesn't in. own the land there. Yeah, the, the land can be bought. It's a lot of open space still. Yeah, but, but but once people know he wants to buy it to build a football stadium, the price goes up. That's how it works. Yeah, it, you, know, you got to do something because uh, we need something in L.A. because we just don't have any football. But, but, well, fact, the fact is we do have football. We have college football in L.A., some of the best in the country. No, the best. Oh, I, USC well, is the best. Well, but and UCLA is uh, interesting to watch, if not the best. Okay, but the point is that uh, we have got football in L.A. We don't have the NFL in L.A. We do not need the NFL in L.A. We certainly don't need it enough to spend any money to put it here. Yeah, that should be all private enterprise. We shouldn't have any money going to it. The only thing is, I would say, if, if it has to be where we have some kind of transportation, if we can train people in, that makes it a lot easier, a lot more accessible. And Well, you know as well as I do, very few people are going to take the train in Southern California. That's the way it really is. Yeah, that's true. Well, thank I you. Mean, I mean, there is a blue, there's a blue line stop right near uh, Staples Center. Not exactly packed after a game. Yeah, true. All right, thank you very much. You have a good weekend, and I've been uh, a long-time listener since the Joe Crummy days. Well, Ralph, thank you very much for that. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM-TOM-TOM. 1-800-5800-8666. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. Don't forget our Saturday show tomorrow from 2 until 6 p.m. 2 until 6 p.m. Pacific Time on 97.1 FM Talk and at BlowMeUpTom.com. That's right. Tomorrow, our sixth day. We're here six days a week, Monday through Friday from 3 until 8 p.m. as you head home. Saturdays, 2 to 6 p.m. Pacific Time on 97.1 FM Talk and at BlowMeUpTom.com. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes here, anything at all. It's Jeffrey on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Jeffrey. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. All right, cool. Hey, I wanted to know, I know um, you do the tasting room on Sundays, and I know you're big with wine. I want to know how you developed your palate and also how um, how your, your wine that you're making is going. Well, uh, the, I, I developed my palate by drinking a lot of wine, a politically incorrect <laughs> answer. But that's how you develop your palate. You drink all kinds of wine, different varietals from different countries. Different vintages. Okay. Uh, you make notes about what you thought. Uh, you talk to other people about what they think. It's a lifelong process. Yeah, I, you, you got me drinking it. Uh, it's been about a year or so, and it's definitely definitely a way to get chicks. Easiest way to get chicks. Oh, please. If, if you know even a little bit about wine, chicks go crazy. I'm putting you. Uh, my only other question is, how you, how's that Syrah you're making? I, I saw it on your, uh, but you only have two videos on your um, tasting room website. I am, uh, in fact, waiting for the next uh, barrel sample that uh, should be here any day now. Okay, so are, are you going to actually sell that, or is that just your personal and you're just going to leave I it? don't even know. I have <laughs> no idea at this point. Right now, we're just making it. By the way, how can I say I'd sell it if I don't know if it's any good? Yeah, I guess so, right? You don't want to sell something that's nasty. <laughs> it's the first time I ever did this. <laughs> well, it definitely does look interesting. Hey, um, in the uh, Valley area, do you know a good wine bar that, you know, is good to maybe pick up chicks or just a really good knowledge of people to speak to? I am not familiar with wine bars in the San Fernando Valley at all. Um, you know, all I can tell you is that there are restaurants that serve good wine. Um, I don't know. One of my faves, I don't know if it's still there, uh, 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 Pinot Bistro on uh, Ventura Boulevard, but is, is it still there? I don't even uh, know. I may, uh, maybe I'll Google it and see if I can find it. Yeah, it's but, on, uh, uh, well, that's very good. That's good thinking. Uh, Pinot Bistro on uh, Ventura Boulevard. Yes, there it is. 12969 Ventura Boulevard. A great wine list and a cool little uh, outdoor area to sit if it's a nice evening. Fantastic. Good restaurant, too. Okay, perfect. Perfect. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I do appreciate it, and I'm going to drink as much as possible. Sounds good to me. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Jim on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. How are you? Great. Tom, you know, I really have a comment on uh, Madoff 
And you know, I'm in finance. I'm 39 years old and manage money. And I think it's important for people when they make any type of investments with a broker or a money manager, they have the right to full disclosure, um, meaning you have the right to know where your positions are. You should be getting in monthly statements uh, as well, and you should have access to your money right away. And if you don't have access to your money right away, is that you should know why. Are you being invested in something that's locked up? So you have the right to ask a lot of questions. I think what people fail to do is because they're not familiar with the stock market or mutual funds or commodities is they feel stupid or they're scared. And any person that's in the business is licensed through the federal government, the Security Exchange Commission, is that no question is too stupid. And you should never give anyone your money unless you totally understand what's going on. The thing with Bernie Madoff, what happened was, though, is he's fudging the books. He's fudging the statements. So people are getting in statements with positions, and they thought they were actually real and that they could get in. Um, well, what they don't apparently know, from what I've heard, they don't even know what the money's invested in. They just see a balance, where they uh, see a balance and a dividend. <laughs> How was it earned? Uh, what was the investment in? Uh, does it ever go down? Uh, nobody ever asked questions like that. Apparently, they didn't get any information like that on their statement. Uh, then, then I stand. I stand corrected. My my assumption was is that they were getting statements saying they own ABC stock and they had this amount of shares and it's gone up by this much or down that much. But if they're just getting a statement with a P and L basically up or down, well, then uh, you know, then I guess it would be the client's fault. To, many to people were getting questions. many people were getting checks and were just thrilled. Yeah. You know, I was like, I can't believe how much money I'm making. Isn't that great? And as long as they were getting a check with a quote-unquote dividend, they didn't question it. Well, you, you know, you made a good comment earlier about your own portfolio where you said you were down, I believe, 20 or 25 percent compared to the market indexes, which is down 40 percent or 42 in 08. Is that's considered good because you benchmark it, and so in a sense you're ahead, of, you're ahead of the game. And so, if the Dow Jones is going down and someone like Madoff's up every single year, people should raise up a red flag. And what makes this guy special? There is no formula. There is none. There is none. There is none. If there was a formula, we'd all be really rich, and then being a multimillionaire would mean nothing. Um, it's all about risk management. But I just wanted to throw it out there. I didn't mean to go off on a tangent, but I think it's important for people to invest in themselves and then ask questions. Yes, and uh, if you don't know where the money is invested or if you don't understand the investment, you shouldn't have gotten into it. And if you can get out, you should get out. Yeah, and the, and the thing is with hedge funds is, you know, it's, you have these these people that are managing hedge funds and, and they get they see a P&L, kind of like Bernie Madoff, and then they lock up the money for a year, meaning you can't withdraw your money for one year, and then yours just shows every month or every quarter that you're up or down. But at the end of the day, um, that person that's managing that hedge fund should have a third person, a third party, giving you statements, not from the same firm. If the same firm is sending you statements, it shows a red flag. It show, in my opinion, is that uh, they could be cooking the books. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Gabriel on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much. Hey, I'm having a problem right now with uh, my wife. Um, I've recently taken a job in El Segundo, and I live in San Diego. And uh, she told me when I took the job out here in San Diego, in, in Los Angeles, in El Segundo, that uh, she would uh, be okay with relocating. But since I'm not making the money that uh, we thought we were going to be making at this job, um, she's not she's not interested in moving out here now. So I've been stuck on a commute from L.A. to San Diego day in and day out for the last five months, and now our lease is going up on our townhome. And uh, it's sign another lease or look for another place to live. And she's just not wanting to get out of here at all. Well. Plus, she has the upper hand right now. She's making a little bit more money than me. Like, I, I actually took a lower paying position uh, when I came out here with the opportunity of growth with the company that I'm at. Which you know, th an opportunity you thought you would have that apparently yeah. hasn't come through. Yeah, yeah. It, it really hasn't came through. I'm learning a lot of new things. And I understand right now, like... Getting as much knowledge and education on things is key. It is a new field for me. Uh, it's with a great company in Internet advertising, and it's a step up from the company that I was at. I just, I'm just i just not making as much money 
You know, I, I mean, I, I can see myself making money in six months to a year from now, but you know, that's six months to a year of commuting from here to Los Angeles. I just can't do any. I can't. I can't open her eyes. She's just being real bullheaded. Well, I, I'll put it this way: I would not commute three hours to work ever. I saw my father uh, do two and a half hours a day. He commuted. Uh, uh, from uh, Lower Manhattan in New York City uh, to the middle of Suffolk County, Long Island, uh, so he had to leave every morning at six a.m. to get to work by eight thirty. I'm sure you know how that feels. And that's exactly my commute right now. Six, four four eight, thirty eight, in the afternoon, he'd get out of work. He'd be home at seven if traffic was normal. Yeah, and and it was normally bad, but it could get worse with a jackknife tractor trailer. You know the deal. Exactly. Um, but the thing is, these are things that you and your wife should have discussed before you took the gig. And if you're telling me she wasn't being honest with you about her feelings, then, then you've got bigger problems than just your job. She's just really nervous in this economy. Like, I, I don't know. She, I kept telling her that things were going to start going downhill, and she wasn't keeping her eyes open. And I told her, I'm leaving the company that I'm at to go into more of a successful position because the company that I was at, I didn't. They're, they're, they're actually downsizing now. The company I'm with right now is hiring. Right. But the question is, were there no jobs in San Diego? Not in this specific field. Right. I mean, I could have went back to doing something that I didn't want to do. Right. Uh, unfortunately, I, you know, I'm, I didn't go to college. I'm, I'm not that educated of a person. Um, I, I would love to go back to school, but we also have four kids, and it's just... Four kids? Juggling, yeah, juggling four kids, you know, paying for the mistakes that i made over the last 10 years. You know, when did you get married? I got married two years ago. So when did you start having kids? <laughs> I had my first kid when I was eighteen. Why'd you do that? I I I, I screwed up and thought she was on birth control. One. Sh All right, one that's the first old. time. How about the other three? The other three. The other three were. Oh man. Well, I actually have two more. I've taken on one kid with her. <sighs> The other two came from a previous relationship, and I have custody of them and live with her now. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, it's a, I, I, I kick myself in the ass, you know, for it, but, I mean, the only thing I can do right now... I mean, you realize when you do these things, it, it limits your ability oh, to, to pursue a career. Absolutely. I tell this to my young coworkers. I'm the oldest person at my work. I'm 30. Everyone there is about 26, 27, and I spread the gospel. I tell them, hey, don't don't screw yourself with moving in with your girlfriends or any crap like that. Live your life and focus in on making your money. I told, I mean, I've only been listening to you for about four months, but what you say really hits home. I mean, I, there's no such thing as a time machine, but if there was, I'd be the first in line. Yeah. I mean, you have to consider the possibility that this marriage might not work out for you. Oh, absolutely. I've already considered that. And it's not just due, not due to the fact that I'm not happy. It's just I don't have my stuff together. <laughs> well, zero tolerance policy. I do. I understand. And, uh, you know, you're going to have to consider uh, possibly uh, maybe you have to move to El Segundo or Manhattan Beach. Would that be so bad? <laughs> I'm thinking about that right now. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show. Don't forget we're here tomorrow from 2 until 6 p.m. Tomorrow. The Saturday edition of the Tom Lanka Show, 2 to 6 p.m. right here. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Rachel, on wide open telephones on the Tom Lanka Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. I listen to your show uh, in the cars on my way to work. Great. And I just want to let you know that not all women are out for money from guys. Well, no one said that because not all women can get money. For example, fat or ugly women or older women can't get money. <laughs> so uh, no one here believes that all women are out for money because most women can't get money. It's just the hot chicks. What about money that I have myself? Generally, women who earn their own money, they're either models, actresses, singers, or fat and ugly. She's a piggy piggy. <laughs> Well, I was—I uh, am—I am now fat, but I wasn't always fat. Oh, and, but, I that, my own and look now, well, yeah, but you have more now than you had then, right? Yeah, 
I had a baby, so you know, still trying to get back. Eh, we yeah, well, they're just still trying to get back. Come on, come <laughs> on. You know what? Does Salma Hayek get a baby? Take a look. Take a look. Yeah, well, I support I support my baby's father. So the point I'm uh, the why that, do you why why do you have uh, why do you have a baby with a deadbeat? Um, well, he's an artist and deadbeat, and this is an unconventional lifestyle. Deadbeat. <laughs> Homeless people have unconventional lifestyles, too. Well, I guess my point is, uh, my plan, is, or I guess the plan is for him to get on his feet financially. Whose plan? Who's plan? Your plan? I guess both of our plans. <laughs> well, you know I, you know what I'm planning on? I'm planning on having dinner with Santa Claus uh, at Spago coming up this uh, Christmas season. <laughs> well, good luck with Just that. Just him and me. But it can happen. Wolfgang Puck makes milk and cookies. Have you ever had milk and cookies from Spago? Fantastic. <laughs> I just, so not, so my plan is for me and Santa to get together. It could happen. It might not be Santa Claus, but someone named Santa. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. Um, but not all women are out for money from guys. Yeah, right? but again, darling, uh, look, you, you can't be that attractive if you not only have enough money, but you're supporting a man. Chances are he's more attractive than you are. Um, probably right now, that's true. There we go. But uh, unattractive. What? I said I'm not an unattractive, like hideous person. Yeah, but I but, but you to... are. You are fat. You just told us. Well, yeah, but just recently, I wasn't always like this. Come on. No, seriously. You, you're with this guy because he's good in the sack. No, 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 we're not together. We're not even dating. You're not even dating. How'd you have a baby with him? Oh, because we dated before. I see. And you stopped. You're supporting him. Well, just for child care and for him to get on his feet. Why are you doing that? Um, because we're friends and I still like him as a person. I, I just think that. So you, you know, figured out what a deadbeat he was and you stopped uh, being involved with him. Um. Well, I, I guess we just broke up because it wasn't working out. We did too many. Because issues. he was a deadbeat. Well, no, that wasn't that wasn't really it. He had a job when we broke up. Really? What What did he do for a living? Um. Well, he worked for a, a wireless company. <laughs> What kind of career is that? Um, well, it's a good day job for someone who wants to be an artist. <laughs> and now he just decided not to do any day job. No, no, no. He has a job. He has a job. What, what is his job now? Um, I'm not actually sure how to just... He just works for, like, an entertainment company. <laughs> he works for an entertainment company? What does he do? He's a fluffer? Um, no, no, no. He has, like, a nine-to-five. I just don't know exactly what it is. You don't even pay. know what he does for a living? I don't pay attention. <laughs> Is his name Dean J. D'Amelio? No. Okay. Just checking. <laughs> but, you know, some people are good and decent. That's what, that was my only point. And, but again, hot chicks uh, uh, want money. But they want to be compensated for being hot chicks. Maybe hot chicks that don't have a brain in their head. No, no. Hot chicks, period. I know plenty of hot women that are like lawyers and doctors. They're and not hot. They're they're old. No, they really are. They're old. They're older than you. They're my age or younger. No, they're not. Come on. No, it's true. How many doctors are younger than you? I mean, doctors. Are, the uh, the youngest doctors I know are maybe twenty seven. How old? How old do you think I am? Thirty. All right, right. So I'm thirty. But uh, when I was going through my career. When I was young, there was plenty of doctors my age that were good-looking. <laughs> I see. And just that not every, and you don't have to be a freaking supermodel to, you know, exist in this world. Most I, of them are. I didn't say that, but the, 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 the women with money generally are not the supermodels. Well, supermodels have money, uh, but the vast majority of hot chicks are not supermodels, actresses, or singers. And are, they are they are receptionists. They they their dinner is potato skins at TGI Fridays. They also, but they also don't have to be gold diggers. You can be independent in your yeah, life. You Let's can be, but it's highly unlikely you would be. I've always been independent, and darling, I'm, I'm talking about hot chicks. <laughs> when I was younger, I absolutely had no problem. So you were ten. You know, honestly, maybe like an eight. Uh, I, I, darling, we're talking nines and tens here. <laughs> Are you a nine or a ten? No, but uh, I also don't take money from women. So the rest of the the rest of the eights in the world just have to pay themselves. Uh, what I'm telling you is nines and tens don't have to earn their own money. But 
I'm sure nines and tens do own their, earn their own money. But uh, like if they're supermodels or Beyonce or somebody like that. But come on, most people are not Beyonce. Maybe they're just really intelligent. Most people are more like Fantasia. Can't you be intelligent? I don't think she's a ten. Intelligence, intelligence does not do man, a man any good, but a woman is intelligent. That doesn't do us any good at all. <laughs> that's a sad, sad world. That's how it is. Did, 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 your, did, your, did your ex-boyfriend, the artist, did he give you an IQ test before he started having sex with you? Um, I think it's pretty clear that I'm intelligent. <laughs> he didn't care if you were or you weren't. I don't think you could sustain a relationship with somebody who's not intelligent for a and, long period and, of time. And you didn't. Well, we dated for like two years. Two years? You know, if you were a sitcom, you wouldn't even make it into syndication with two years. <laughs> yeah, Firefly made it after one year. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right, darling, this is about all uh, all one man can take here. Uh, Pete on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Pete. Um, the reason I'm calling is because I have a relationship with this lady. She's about uh, 11 years younger than me, and uh, she's got two kids of her own. Strike uh, one. Yes. We've been living together for about three years. Strike two. And, um, yeah, I messed up. Um, actually, uh, she's turning kind of controlling on me. And you continue to tolerate it. Strike three. You're out! I try because I feel love for her. You're a moron. <laughs> the, I don't. Uh, I don't love. I do not love controlling people. I grew up with a controlling father. Anytime someone is controlling, I do not love them. Okay. I love me. Right. So you clearly don't love yourself. My situation is this. I called it off uh, about a week ago. You broke up with her? Yes, but we're living in the same house. Why? I mean, I have no means uh, of, of getting out of the house for now. So you're a loser, too, like the last guy. I'm sorry? Our email address is my name, Tom at LowMeUpTom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.